Hi everybody and happy January. On this snowy winter day, I'm going to be talking about our winter picture books. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Julia. This is Julia at home. I am a homeschooling mom to a newly turned seven year old who's in first grade, an almost five year old who's doing preschool, and a baby who is now about seven months old, which is crazy. On this channel, I share videos about homeschooling, motherhood, sometimes that includes baby stuff, sometimes that includes planning. If you like this video, remember to hit that thumbs up button below and please subscribe if you haven't already and then you won't miss any of my new content. Now let's go see the books. These first couple books are aimed at really young children. So they're just basic winter board books. This one's got um, touchy feely stuff on it. So that the baby can touch and see. And um, I probably found it at Barnes and Noble when my when my oldest was a baby, we lived within uh, we lived in a, an area we could walk walk around city like, and uh, we used to walk to Barnes and Noble and just peruse sometimes. So I probably picked it up there. And then this this one is Winter by Gerda Muller, and I have a set that has all the seasons, and these are beautiful. They're just pictures. So what's great about that, especially for younger children, is you ask them to show you. To tell you about it or when they're really little and pre-talking and all that you can also point out what you see and it's really helpful for language development um, and also as they get older they can tell their own story with it so I love these books I think the pictures are beautiful um, I think the spring one's my favorite <laughs> um, but we'll get to that one when it gets to spring yeah so that's the um, Gerda Muller and I, I recommend these ones the Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. This is a classic. I have the board book edition. Um, it's just it's just what I ended up getting. Um, and it's it's been well loved. If you don't know this one, it's, um, it's a classic, really. Now, here are a couple by one of my favorite authors, uh, Jan Brett. So we have The Mitten and we have The Hat. Um, and these are two that I kind of save to put out during the winter time. Um, this, I just happen to have the mitten in board book form and I like that for the younger kids cause they're less likely to rip it. Um, yeah. So we've, we've, again, this is one we've had since my daughter was little. It's been read many, many times. There are also some great, um, I've seen some parents and teachers doing some great activities with the mittens. So, um, if you're interested in something like that, you can go ahead and search that on Pinterest. Um, we also have the hat. Um, they're both a little bit similar with, with woodland creatures and or farm creatures. This one has more farm creatures. Um, and it, my, you know, I think kids in general, but my kids I know love animals. So these ones are great. Um, and I believe it's like a Scandinavian feel to them. Um, so that's kind of nice for the winter time. Uh, she also has some that aren't winter Scandinavia that I have. In other places for other things and um, when I do some more book videos I will show more Jan Brett I am sure. This is the story of the Snow Children by Sybil Von Offers. Um, this happens to be the mini version. Often when I'm looking online it's hard to find the bigger sizes but if you can find them like scoop them up because they're just they're just magical. Um, she was an author um, in the early 1900s and it's just she just created these magical worlds with beautiful pictures. Um, so this is about the snow children and the main character, the little girl goes on an adventure uh, with the snow children. So it's a sweet little story. Pippa and Pell in the Winter Snow. This is actually a newer one for us, but we have several of Daniela Drescher's other books. Um, and I, I got this for fun to go with our, um, our unit on weather that we're doing currently. And so I thought when we're doing snow, it would just be fun to add this on. And it's it's another sweet story. Um, so that's Pippa and Pell in the Winter Snow. This next one is one of my son's favorites. This is Katie and the Big Snow. Our local independent bookstore does a program each December where you can gift books to children who don't have books and um, there's snowflakes for each child with their name and their age and if they've given interest. And um, my son picked Katie out because he said that any child would love to have Katie. And I thought that was really sweet, but shows you how much he likes this book. In the story, the whole town is snowed in and Katie, um, she gets her snowplow on 
and she goes ahead and she she saves everyone basically um the fire department and the police station and gets people to the hospital that are sick and um so yeah she katie is the hero of the book so that's katie and the big snow the next two are uh, related i guess <laughs> they're by astrid lindgren and they are the tomton and then we also got the tomton and the fox um and these are really fun. So the Tom Ten's like this quiet creature that lives on this old farm and takes care of all the animals. And he speaks in a soft little voice that only the animals and children can understand. But children don't usually see him because he's only out at night and they're sleeping. Um, and in this one, he's he stops the fox from eating all the farm animals. So he's protecting the farm animals. But then at the end, he feeds the fox um, some porridge. <laughs> so... Um, I really like these ones. Another favorite is Owl Moon. You will have seen this if you watched my Nocturnal Animals unit as well. We've had it for a long time. I think it's a classic. It's, you know, the the girl is remembering her father taking her owling. They go out in the crisp moonlit night and they try to see an owl. Um, and they, her father does the owl calls and she has to be really quiet. And this the whole... The whole book has this sense of, of wonder, of mystery, of awe, of like this hushed awe of nature, of this owl. It's, it's it just like the book really gives you that feeling. And I enjoy reading that in the winter. When Winter Comes is another one I've had since my daughter was, oh gosh, probably a toddler. Um, because it's just a really good... Um, I get them used so I have other people's names in them, but, um, it's just a really good kind of description of what's happening for the young child in winter. It talks about where do things go? Where do the flowers go? Uh, where the caterpillars go? And it shows you, um, where some of them go as well. And, and it ends with, you know, where, where does, um, oh, there's, where do the deer go? Where did the deer go? I like that one. And it, it ends with the child in snug in bed. When Winter Comes. This is great to read aloud to the younger kids. It's not a board book, so um, maybe don't let your toddlers get their hands on it. Um, but for, you know, like two and three year olds and four year olds, like this, this is great for them to work on their understanding of what's happening during the season. Loud Winter's Nap is a fun one. We were gifted this one. The tortoise is trying to find a place to nap because it's winter and he wants to hibernate. But all these animals that are awake during winter keep waking him up and he's getting grouchy because he can't find a place to nap. Um, but spoiler alert, he ends up having fun anyway. So this is really, it's its just a fun book. Um, let me show you some of the pictures. I also really like the pictures in this one. It just, it just shows this kind of idyllic as a lot of these books do, but this is an idyllic winter scene where, you know, don't you want to be out there, out there with them skating? Bear Snores On. This is a series by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman. We read several of them. Um, this was actually gifted to us by our doctor's office. Every time my children go in for a checkup at our um, pediatrician here, they give them a book, which is fantastic. It, the, I just, ah, oh, I'm thrilled. Anyway. Bear Snores On is about bear hibernating and um, all of his friends, he's, you know, he's cozy in his den um, and all of his friends come in out of the cold uh, while he's asleep because um, he's hibernating. Um, these are, these are, it's a fun series. I'd recommend any of them, but um, they all have fun at the end. Um, uh, but this this one's great. Um, another one, Bear Gives Thanks, or Bear Says Thanks. Bear Says Thanks is one. Do we have it? I don't know if we have it, or I just always get it from the library, but um, we often read that one for Thanksgiving as well. But this is a great one for winter, about hibernating. Our very last book is sadly missing the uh, dust cover, so I'm going to insert a picture here of what the image is. And this is a Snowflake Bentley by... See, I need the dust cover. Snowflake Bentley by Jacqueline Briggs Martin. 
Um, and this is a nonfiction book. If you don't know, Snowflake Bentley um, was born in the 1860s in Vermont, about an hour north of where we live. Um, and he was fascinated with nature, but particularly snow. His name was actually Wilson Bentley. And he um, found a way to photograph and study snow crystals. And so he took hundreds and hundreds of pictures of different snow crystals um, and preserved them. And it ended up being made into a book um, a couple of years, I think only a couple of years were very shortly before he ended up dying. Um, uh, he was in his 60s, I believe. He's pretty young. And um, anyway, this book is about him and his life. And it has um, like the, the regular text and then it has like smaller text up here where it tells you more details. I end up reading both when I read it to my kids. We're, we're reading this as part of our um, weather unit right now and we're talking about snow and we actually just went and visited, there's a Snowflake Bentley Museum. It's just like a little room, but um, they have his camera and microscope there and a, his um, cherished quilt that his mother made him which I thought was really cool. Um, it's so I, we've actually had this book for years. And so seeing those items after reading this book so many times was exciting for me. It's a great book. It is um, a really well told story of his life and a great story to learn during the winter. Great person to talk about during the winter. The winter sun has now fully set and I've shown you all of my winter picture books. Please click that like button below and the subscribe button. I really hope you enjoy reading some books with your kids this winter, and I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.